What is going on? Welcome back to Jiu-Jitsu Outlet. I am sitting down with perhaps the most dangerous white belt who has ever been on this podcast, Nathan Brooks. I just learned that you're a white belt. I was like, dude, there's no way. There's a lot of guys like you, though, who are like not really white belts, but but kind of white belts. But in addition to training martial arts, you're also a really successful real estate investor and not just an investor, but you're actually a real estate developer like you're at a next level of the game and you've got a new book I, I know you're here to talk all about it i'm really stoked to dive in nathan thank you for coming on the show man appreciate you being here oh i appreciate being here and uh that was a, that was a hell of a, a, a intro so um yes i i love the jujitsu game and uh you know uh, patience is a virtue, I guess, with our uh, belts. But um, you know, it's a pleasure. I love, I love the jujitsu game, and certainly love the real estate game too. And so, looking forward to diving into all of that. I want to get into talking about real estate and jujitsu and kind of how they have a lot in common. But first, I'm going to ask you the question that we ask everyone: uh, whether they're a UFC fighter like James Krause, or they're ADCC champion or they're a brand new white belt or blue belt or someone who's come on this show. Um, how has jujitsu helped your mental health? Like what has it done for you and your life off of the mats? Yeah, I, I would say it's a, it's a life changer for people. And, and when people, you know, think about jujitsu and don't have necessarily a concept of what it feels like to have someone really good, get their hands on you, and and recognize like oh man there's there's a lot there's many layers to this game and many many different you know games to individuals and so i you know from a the perspective is number one like actual mental health so like you're having a stressful day going to the gym for 90 minutes and you know you're you're going to be feeling in a totally different place um there's a camaraderie and brotherhood in in that sport and um amazing people are on the mats and uh, as long as you go to a gym obviously that has people that care and they they do a good job with that which of course we want everybody to and then you know i would say from uh you know think of discomfort and having perseverance like you as a white belt your experiences you know you're you're learning in under duress and um life has, has these moments. And when we are get, get uncomfortable, get comfortable in the uncomfortable, that's when I think we, we learn the limits of ourselves and we learn the limits of our, our capacity and, uh, and resolve to, you know, persevere, get better, work on things that are hard. So I think it's a beautiful sport. I think so too, man. And, um, let me ask you about this. I know that you had an MMA fight and you said when we were talking about this podcast, that is the only fight you've ever been in was your your MMA fight. So, and I want to I want to ask you a little bit about that. Yeah. Like what was that like for you stepping into the ring uh in front of all those people? Like what did that do for your your mindset, your mental health and and everything like that? Well, you know, it was one of those things the the path for martial arts for me was an interesting one because I you know, I was I was bullied as a kid and I was pretty pretty uh comfortable with with any sort of like altercation like that. And so as I grew up and, you know, I grew up to be a, a bigger guy. So, I'm, you know, six foot three, 200 and, you know, five, 10 pounds. And it's like, okay, well, I, I'd like to know how to handle myself. And I'd like to know, you know, this. And so you have the Tim Ferriss is interviewing people and Joe Rogan and, and Jocko and man, all these people who are talking about, you know, Lex Friedman, uh, jiu-jitsu and so i i just kind of found my way to a jiu-jitsu gym and met my coach uh trey ogden who's who's actually now in the ufc and and um trained under a number of really amazing guys uh, including james kraus which you may or may not have mentioned on this one already but um it, it i think the, the the whole fight experience and fight camp and and people don't understand if you haven't trained you don't understand the level of of um dedication and effort and training that goes into the guys if you you watch the what ufc or bfl or bellator or whatever low regional scene like these guys bust their butts in a way that it just doesn't it doesn't calculate 
And, you know, there's so many different forms of learning too. So you have the athlete and then you have the the wrestler and the kickboxer and the, the jujitsu. And, and um, so, you know, for me, it was just, it was a hellacious journey. I can't say there weren't tears, you know, after practice on a couple occasions, I can't say I wasn't like, what the hell did I just get myself into? Uh, but I knew in the moment that, you know, it's pretty crazy. I have this picture right here. I'll show it to you it's sitting on my desk. Um, you know, there's, you know, a thousand people in an arena and, you know, at the end of the day, you're not fighting this other guy. You're, you're working through it yourself for yourself. And, um, and so it was, it was a, a profound, profound experience to go through that whole training camp experience. I had a lot of appreciation and gratitude for, for the fighters who I train with and, and for my opponent too, you know, for showing up and, um, I, man, I, I, there's nothing like that experience. Yeah. That, that sounds amazing, man. Like for me, I've never had an MMA fight, but I've done a lot of grappling tournaments and, um, I can say the experience is just not the same. Like I haven't had the MMA experience, but, um, it's not the same as like going to a, a grappling tournament where there's all these different mats out you know, and no one's punching each other. You know what I'm saying? Like the MMA yeah. fight, MMA is a different yeah. story. Like for people who don't, who don't really realize this yet, this is what I tell people a lot. Like in jujitsu, if thing, if everything goes right in jujitsu at the end of the match, both guys are as they were before they started. Like they're physically the same one guy lost, but he ideally tapped in time and no one got hurt. If someone got hurt, it was an accident. Yep. You know, the injuries happen, but injuries also happen driving cars, you know, and there's accidents driving cars. So if like if there's an accident on the mats, it's kind of like it's kind of like that. Like there's a higher rate of injury, maybe, but there's it's an accident. Whereas in MMA, if everything goes right, one guy's going to the hospital with a concussion and brain damage because he got knocked the <laughs> fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Like and he's he needs he might need surgery. Yeah. Like it's a different level of sport where that's it's not an accident. There's no accident. It all went according to plan. He got head kicked. You know what I mean? Like it's a different level of violence. Yeah. Um, and me, I'm not, I, I'll tell you right now, like I haven't done it. You know, I'm good. I had a big concussion a few years back. And I'm not willing to take the risk of stepping in the ring. So props to you. Shout out to people like you. Like, that's one of the reasons why I love hanging out and training with MMA fighters, because you guys are so tough, so freaking tough. And um, it takes a lot of guts to get and do like a jujitsu tournament or a wrestling tournament or, you know, any any sport really it takes a certain level of grit. But MMA for me is like the extreme. It's up there with like base jumping or something Top tier. <laughs> you know what i mean like it's like you're strapping on one of those suits uh that they like the flying squ squirrel outfits you know it's squirrel like suit. yeah it's like that level yeah from, uh, it's a different level so props to you man that's badass i dude i i appreciate it i i, I can't say i have done the um power paragliding where you strap the lawnmower with the propeller to your back and uh, launch yourself into the sky so um i would I mean, I think there's there's a higher opportunity for death in that sport, perhaps, but uh, it's a lot more painful in uh, MMA. Nobody's trying to punch you, and um, if you've never been calf kicked, then um, you can you can also experience that. <laughs> that, uh, but um, no, it's MMA is a is a wonderful sport, and uh, it's yeah. You know, I think a lot of people think it's just about you know people beating each other up, and certainly there is some people who there are some people who are, that's really their motivation, but um, I think there's a lot of warriors on a lot of journeys in there too. Yeah. And that's something that we get into a lot on this podcast is like martial arts is really a spiritual quest. Almost. It's like a personal development journey. Like something you said earlier was, you know, you showed that picture and you're saying like, you're not really fighting that guy. You're fighting you you're you're growing yourself you know it's a battle against yourself the other person is just there as almost the vehicle in a way um it's powerful man yeah it's powerful. yeah and it's true and i and then i think you know a lot of times i feel like as a society we might uh be a little a little softer on ourselves right now or like it's okay not to do, get the workout and it's okay not to you know train or whatever but 
you know, in the end, I think the other thing about martial arts is that it's a it's something that is a is a real tool. You know, it's a real actual thing. If you were on a flight and there's something weird going on, or you're in a restaurant, and something weird's going on, you know how to handle yourself. And there's a lot of people who, you know, you can you don't have to go far on the internet to look for a really terrible fight. You know, somebody swinging uh, to know what that looks like. And if you, you know, I think I think it also gives you a healthy respect to not want to be in a fight as well. Oh yeah. Like that's huge, man. And, um, just to talk on that for just a moment longer, like one of the biggest lessons I've taken away from jujitsu is like, anyone can kick my butt. Potentially I've been beat up by guys who weigh like 135 pounds and they're super way smaller than me, but they're way more skilled than me. And you wouldn't know that from first looking at them because they look like just a small person, but then you start to grapple with them and you're like, Oh man, as soon as they grab onto you, you can feel that, you're probably going to get taken down and choked out pretty quickly and, um, or something, you yeah. know, and, um, there's a lot of those guys out there, man. And, um, it's powerful, you know, it, uh, for guys, especially it's a powerful thing. Um, because most guys think that they're going to be like, Oh yeah, I'm going to do okay. Right. But then they go and just get handled like they're a baby. And it's a different, like, it's a different story than most people are, <laughs> are expecting. <laughs> It's not just that you got beat up. It's more like, yes. oh, you got you got murked in 15 seconds. <laughs> it's like a different, different story. Yeah, I remember. I I remember. Uh, there's a guy named Isaac Dolgarian who um, who just got in the UFC, and I remember him coming to the gym. And you know, he's I don't know what he fights at. I, I really don't remember. Maybe 135. Um, he's not a big guy, but man, I remember like the first time uh rolling with that guy and just like i he's i have like 60 pounds on him but it it did not make one bit of a difference and uh it it'll it'll catch your attention or you know i remember having this opportunity to roll with um anthony Lionheart smith who was in the gym training with james kraus and uh you know just just how strong and technical and you know smooth and you know it just the, the levels and layers of the game, James Krause too, you know, obviously he's, he's an absolute monster. Oh yeah, man. That's one of the things that you learn in, in martial arts. It's like the levels to the game, you know, the, how, just like how they're there, you know, you or me might be able to handle someone who just is coming in on their first day, you know, someone who's been training as long as Krause or as, as much as Krause, they can handle us in just the same way and make us feel like we're a little baby. And it's, it's ridiculous. There's levels to the game. Yeah. And I'm sure that there's someone out there who could potentially do that to them. I don't know. Kraus is pretty freaking good though. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Kraus is kind of like a Puma, but dude, I want to transition into something else. Yeah, Not, um, not too many. <laughs> I want to transition into something else. Um, so there's levels of the game in, in uh real estate too. And we talked about this a little bit before the podcast, but these days, man, like you just pull up YouTube or you pull up Instagram. There's so many fake gurus out there talking about how to get rich using real estate, how to use it to change your life. And I know that you're someone who's actually done this and not just done this, but again, like you become a real estate developer. You actually develop real estate that other people can invest in, which is amazing. So I wanted to hear from you, man. Like, let's say there's someone listening to this who's like pretty new on their entrepreneurship journey. They're they're obviously they're into jujitsu or they're into MMA and they're they're entrepreneurial. Like I'm sure you've met these a lot of these people too, where there's a lot of jujitsu guys or MMA people who are who are open minded and they're thinking big and they're they are they're wise to this stuff. So they know that real estate or entrepreneurship can can get them rich but they they know also like there's so many fake gurus out there so i guess you're someone man i know this is a long-winded question but you're someone who's actually done this man like what would you say to someone who's just starting out and looking at real estate as their their wealth mechanism vehicle yeah no it's a it's a really really great question and honestly that's that's part of the reason i was really motivated to write my book because I really am frustrated at so many gurus and so many uh, people out there. Yeah, and I, I will say, I also know many people who have courses and that sort of thing who are really, you know, top tier people and and have top tier actual you know information that help. But yeah, I, I would say 
you know, part of the challenge is uh, a misunderstanding of what problems being solved. So, you know, for instance, I'll hear, you know, a lot of people say like, I'm, you know, I would be, I would do real estate, but I don't have the money. And, you know, I always say, you know, solve the problem, right? Money's not the problem. The problem is the problem. So do you have a, a great deal that you could bring to somebody like myself or, you know, other real estate folks who those together or you have a great lender who understands your business plan and and you've written it out and you've had a conversation you built relationship and you know i can tell you over the years you know, i've done real estate now for gosh i i can't believe saying things like this but you know well over a decade and um you know going into the second decade quite a ways and and relationships are everything you know so it's it's like build your build a concept of what you want to create and then invite people into your world who can help you solve those things and where, where there's, there's a, an opportunity and benefit to, to work together in, in your alignment, in your, in your, um, the things you want and the things other people are, you know, wanting those alignments are as closely aligned as possible. And then the other thing I would say is, you know, take, take action because Many, many of our clients and, and folks I've talked to over the years who have been successful took action, and it wasn't perfect. It was imperfect action towards towards a clear result, and that imperfect action led to learning, right, and led to um, being able to have repetition and, and, and um, just like jujitsu, right? You have incompetent, con, con, you know, conscious incompetence and conscious incompetence. And th these things, these things take time. And so clear plan, at least today, actually taking action and seeking out relationships, building relationships and creating opportunities to connect with people who are, who are ahead of you and who uh, can help. Man, I feel like you just dropped some serious wisdom in there. And I wanted to ask a few, few little follow-up questions, if that's okay. But um, one of them yeah, of about, uh, about building relationships, because I feel like that's a, that's a huge one. And I want to talk about that just a little more. Like that's big for everything. That's big for like, if someone's listening to this, they might have a spouse or kids or, um, you know, obviously people at the gym or people that they're working with in business. Um, I feel like life in general comes down to building relationships, like in many ways, like not just real estate or business, but like happiness in many ways comes from having great relationships. So I guess how has martial arts and and your business and how is all of this stuff that you've been working on, like, like, I guess, put differently, like, what are some things you figured out about relationship building that you feel most people don't understand? I think, um, well, there's a couple of things. I think people misunderstand that in order to have really healthy relationships, you have to love yourself. Um, and, and so what that means is you actually have to dig into those dark spots that maybe you don't like, or maybe you, you haven't, uh, kept up. So whether it's, you know, mental health, nutrition, getting in the gym, uh, bad, you know, telling yourself bad stories of, of that you're um, an asshole or you're not worth it, or you, you, you aren't smart enough or whatever kind of things we tell each other or tell ourselves, uh, you know, and we all do it by the way. So everybody has stories to tell themselves. And so when we can have the perception of what's happening in our own minds first, then we can really approach other people. And I think, you know, Brene Brown is an amazing author and she talks about vulnerability and, you know, it sounds like a, it feels like it might see, sound strange on a, on a podcast about uh, jujitsu or, you know, fighting or whatever. But uh, you know, I found actually in relationships, the more vulnerable and honest I am in those moments, the more open people are to have real conversations because if you're willing to be vulnerable and honest and open, then, you know, that's going to build trust. That's going to build connection with somebody else. And then they're going to be able to feel, you know, connected to you and vice versa. And, and then I, I think the last key in there, I would say is, you know, most of the time when I had these conversations, people are looking about one person only me. And, you know, it's easy to do that, but I think, 
when we go into relationships and we say, you know, hey, Paul, how can I help? You know, what can I do? Where, where can I help? Where can I bring value? Uh, you show up early and let's, let's, you know, drill some arm bars and drill some triangles or, you know, whatever. There, there's so many ways to build relationships that create, you know, into, into beautiful relationships, cool opportunities, you know, amazing partnerships. So um, that's a couple of points. I love it, man. And um, I wanted to talk about one other thing you, you mentioned this, uh, this idea of taking action and loving yourself. Like, I feel like there's a big connection between mental health and kind of how we feel about ourselves and, and our ability to take action. Like, can you talk about that a little bit? Like, how do you overcome resistance or that kind of emotional baggage of, you know, the imposter syndrome and thinking you're not going to ever amount to anything and all that baloney that everyone has in the back of their heads somewhere. <laughs> like how, what's, you know, what did you do to kind of overcome all that, that stuff? Well, you know, and I will say it's a work on, in progress too. Right. And I have lots of coaches, not just in the, in the MMA world, but in like the personal world and the, and the you know, development world and business world. And so coaches have, have been a key part. So not only, you know, have I helped coach people and, but you know, I have coaches too. And, and so, you know, to the story end, this was, this was something really profound in my life where, you know, we, we all have things that happen to us as kids that help create the way this subconscious programming in our minds. And when you start to realize where these things show up in our subconscious mind is just, you know, running this, this operation and literally, literally talking shit on yourself, you know, or whatever that might be. And, and so, you know, I think anytime you have this moment, if we can, if we can pause for one second after having a negative thought about ourselves and say, hold on a second, is that true? Like, Nathan, you, 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 you aren't going to figure this out or you're not going to get this done or we're going to get our butts kicked on this, uh, in, in this round. You know, how many times you walk into the gym and you're like, I'm feeling like crap today. I'm going to suck. You're like, no, like stop that. So it's, it's having an awareness to say, oh, hold on, hold on. I, that, that's not me, right? No, Nathan, we can actually solve this problem together. Like talking to yourself, which sounds crazy, but it's not. And we're going to have a, a, an actual affirmation and I'm going to work on this problem. And then, so that's, that's step one is like having the actual recognition and then to taking action. It's, it's a defined result is much clearer to take action on than saying, I want to be in real estate and I want to, or I want to be a millionaire. Uh, and so when we, when we can create a, def, a defined end result that we want, now we can back into that problem and help solve it because we've made it clear what the path looks like. And here's the other thing. Most people think that because they lay out one goal, that's going to be the result that happens. And I'm going to give you a little, a little hint. It's not, <laughs> it doesn't ever seem to go exactly as planned. Right. Um, and so, well, we can use the Mike Tyson, you know, quote, right. Everything you have a plan until you get punched in the face. Well, uh, it, whether it's in reality of, you know, in a fist fight situation or it's in, in business, these things happen. So we have to have planning around what's going to happen. And we have, you know, those people around us who are, who have been there, done that and understand it. And then, you know, we have some faith. We have to take, we actually have to take action and there's no you know, time and experience. You can't buy it. You, you have to earn it. And so there's only one way to do it, which is, which is through and, and to actually, you know, pull the trigger, buy a house, buy an apartment, buy an Airbnb, whatever it is. And, um, you know, and learn through the process. Yeah. It's like, you can only watch so many sales training videos, but as soon as you get on a sales call, it's a different story. Like once you actually are on the call and you're asking someone for their money for something that you're trying to sell, it's a different story than just, you know, you get what I'm saying. Just like jujitsu, like you can do the technique yeah. as many times as you want, but if you've never sparred once a day in your life, it's going to be hard to, to try it out. So all these lessons are the same. Like you, you brought up earlier, like getting punched in the face and being able to bounce back. Like that's super important. That's something that at MMA, you can literally drill. You can drill getting punched in the face or if at jujitsu, you can drill getting <laughs> 
you know, getting out of a bad position and getting back on, on top. So it's like this powerful vehicle for this. And, um, man, I want to transition into talking about your book because I feel like it's tied into just about everything that we've been discussing. Can you tell us about your book? Like, why did you write this book? And just tell us a little bit about it. The no quitters guide to crushing real estate, investing and building an extraordinary life. I have it pulled up right here. It's a, it's, it's a badass book, awesome. man. But, um, tell us about this, man. Thank you. Well, you know, I had been thinking about writing a book for years and, and, uh, I had been talking back and forth with Brandon Turner, who's the former you know, co-host of bigger pockets, which is probably the largest real estate podcast on the internet and, um, or largest real estate podcast. And, um, so he has probably, I don't know, seven or eight of the top 10 books on Amazon right now in the real estate category, just an absolute monster in it awesome human being too and just just got back into jujitsu too by the way so it's pretty cool so shout out to brandon oh that's awesome uh, i didn't know he, that uh, yeah he's a good dude uh he, and he also wrote the forward to my book too which is really a, a blessing but um you know i i wanted to inspire people to to take action and to find a, a way to you know I, I hear a lot of times you know people want to get wealthy and they want to do whatever but that's not really a clear goal and it, it doesn't really solve the problem. And I, I look at money as a tool and, you know, so with, with money, you can do cool things, right. That you couldn't necessarily have done without it. But uh, what is the actual end result that you want? And, you know, how do you want to actually live that life? And uh, yeah, I think Tim Ferriss in the four hour work week talked a lot about this, where he's like, do you really want to have enough money to buy, you know, pay the hundred thousand dollar car or do you want enough money to you know lease it or rent it for a month or a year or whatever and enjoy it and because those are two totally different you know uh, amounts of of money but you have the same same experience the same result and that uh, same thing with a big house right do you want to go on vacation and rent out a cool place for a couple of weeks and and live there or do you really want to buy that that house and, and deal with it and manage it um and so you know, to create a clear vision of what people want and then, and then living a life around it that is actually really awesome and extraordinary, the word I use in the title, because, you know, how many people do we know are like, oh, I don't have time to do that, or I don't have money to do that, or I don't know, you know, how do you, how do, you do that? You know what? I made a plan and I didn't stop until I freaking figured it out. That's how. And, 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 and we set that same expectation in this. So the goal was to, uh, you know, set a basis for people to say, all right, wherever you're at, it's okay. It's okay to own that where, wherever that is. Uh, and then here's what I believe real estate investing is. And here's what I don't believe it is and how we can integrate that from a psychology perspective, like working on ourself, working on our plan, working on ourselves, working on our plan. And then a little real estate 101. And then from there, it's like, okay, what do I want this business to look like? Is it big? Is it small? Do I do big projects? Do I do small projects? Do I just buy a small portfolio and pay it off? Or do I buy a big one and, you know, I want to scale it over time. So there's, there's so many ways that you can do that. And so I wanted to give a blueprint in essence for someone where somebody says, hey, I want to get into real estate investing. Where do I start? What are a couple of books to read? And, uh, you know, I, I truly believe this one is one that, that, uh, people will, will talk about. Whoa, man, I'm excited to read it. I've got a, are you going to do an audible version? Um, yes. So I have the, the, uh, the print version, you know, coming out in January. And then, uh, I plan to follow up with, with an uh, audible version, uh, after that as well. So working with my publisher on that and getting the timing and pacing, right. That's awesome, man. Well, I'm excited to pick it up. And um, I love Audible. That's why I asked about that. I've been uh, been binging on Audible know, lately. But too. um, dude, that's awesome. Well, um, Nathan, I wanted to ask you about one other thing, man. Like you're um just from listening to you talk and just everything that I know about you, like you're a very you're a high level thinker. You know what I mean? Like you're um you're thinking about things at like a macro level, if that makes sense. Like you're big picture kind of guy. So um, just kind of looking at, um, at where the world is at right now, especially with, with, uh, MMA and jujitsu and kind of where it's at, what do you think we should all be doing to maybe make this thing a bit more mainstream? So that way more people could 
could benefit from this? Like, do you think that this is something that could become like a mainstream thing, kind of like, you know, baseball or soccer, for example, or do you think that it's always going to be uh, a niche sport? You know, I think it, I think it has the opportunity to get bigger. Uh, I think, you know, Dana White and UFC has, has really put it on a map in, in, in a way, unlike a lot of the other organizations. Um, and I think people who are watching it from the outside and have no interest to participate, you know, could, could spend a little more time in like understanding techniques or who fighters are and, and that sort of thing. And we we're sharing it because watching it as a, as someone who has, you know, a, a fundamental understanding of the basics, it's a totally different sport to watch and totally, totally different experience than it is, you know, if you don't know what's going on. So you see somebody against the cage and you're like, why aren't you moving? Well, go get in the gym and go deal with a great wrestler putting you against the wall and seeing how you get out. Uh, let me just give you a little, uh, little, little secret there. It's, it sucks and it's hard. Um, and most of the time you might end up with your butt on the ground. So number two, you know, I would say that um, people should go train and there's a couple of reasons. Number one, you're going to find out what you're made of. And number two, uh, it's a great sport. It's a great uh, experience camaraderie. And number three, you know, people knowing how to handle themselves and having some more self-confidence is, is a benefit. And when we see, you know, some crazy stuff going on in the world with some crazy people, you know, that, that's a big deal. So, uh, you know, I, I believe it could be a huge mainstream sport. You know, when you look at like boxing in the, you know, twenties and thirties and forties, how, how popular it was and it's still big, but you know, I think, I think, um, Dana White and the UFC put it on the map and it has, has a long way to run. It does have a lot long way to run, man. I was encouraged by um, ADCC had a really great production this last year and it had, I think 15,000 people were there watching, which is amazing. So that was a big win for grappling. Um, and then I see these other productions yeah. like one, one championship just got on Amazon prime and they're doing uh submission grappling and you and MMA and Muay Thai and kickboxing. And that's, I think, super badass. I, I'm a big fan of what they're doing. So we see these other productions that are kind of stepping it up too. And that's really what needs to happen that, uh, and Gordon Ryan was talking about this on an interview once he was saying like, everyone else needs yes. to step it up. He's like, it can't be just me or just the UFC or just Dana White. He's like, it has to be everyone who steps it up and is like, not just with the training, but the, the production value, you know, and that's something I try to do with this show, try to do a yep. good job, you know, and do a, do a decent production because, I think it's important, you know, it's got to be professional if we're going to actually grow this thing. But anyway, man, I know that we've got, um, we got, we talked about a lot. We've talked about, we summarized a lot and, um, we do got time for one more question. And I think I want to end on this one. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you feel, um, we didn't talk about enough or is there put differently? Is there any question that you wish people would ask you more often? Hmm. That's a very interesting question. Um, you know, I guess uh, I'll say this. I think that people underestimate themselves all the time and they don't give themselves enough, enough grace, enough opportunity to, to go after things that are really important. And, uh, you know, so I want it, anyone listening to this, you know, I, I want you to you know, feel inspired to write down some of the things that maybe you've put off forever and you haven't done anything about. And, uh, I have, I have notes that I take and I, you know, I fly fairly frequently. And so I'll pull up my phone, pull up my notes and, and I'll both read through, you know, two years, three years, five years, 10 years back and add to those notes as it goes and, and put those things back in front of yourself and don't give up on yourself and, and, and make choices that, that put yourself in a position where you can, you can really create whatever it is that you want. Nathan, that's some powerful words, man. I love it. Don't give up on yourself is what Thank I wrote down. Yeah. Well, Nathan, Keep thank you, man. Let, uh, let me ask you this. Where can people find out more about the book and more about what you're doing and where can they follow you and stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you asking that. So um, you can go to noquittersguide.com. Um, uh, 
And uh, there's a link to the book. It's available anywhere books are sold. So you can get it on Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Books a Million, whatever. And uh, it's a it's a big deal to uh, get it purchased on on non uh, sites that uh, you can get a box dropped off at your house a uh, day after. If that makes sense. So trying to send people to those, you know, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, Target, et cetera. Uh, so that's a big help for me. And then, um, you know, I'm on social, mainly on you know Facebook and Instagram. So you can you know, connect with me there and uh, would you know, love to have people in the Casey area too. January 13th, we'll have a, a live book launch in, in town. So I have a number of amazing, amazing speakers coming in from all of the country and it's going to be, it's going to be epic. So that'll be fun. Dude, that's amazing. Well, um, Nathan zoom's literally about to kick us off. I think like momentarily. So I think we ended this right on time, but, um, Dude, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been it's been a great chat. And if you're listening to this, I'll put all the links down below to where you can you can check out what Nathan's doing. Thank you, man. Hey, man. Thanks for having me.